Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wild Woman podcast. Um, this is a place where I um, have conversations with women. I Some I know, some I don't know, but they're all women I greatly admire and learn from, so much from. And it's really conversations with women who are living very authentically, expressing their gifts, honoring the sort of feminine nature, their instincts, their intuition, and living very different lives. And just hearing their stories, what their passions are, what has led them to where they are now. And um, yeah, so today I have a beautiful lady, Laurian Williams from Wales. I'm so, so excited to talk to her and you'll hear why in a moment. But I met Larian in 2015. We were just talking about it before I hit record in Wexford in Ireland on the East Coast. It was New Year's, I think New Year's weekend. And we were at a retreat with the healer that I knew from Galway, a Lebanese man, lovely man, lovely man, and his name is Mon. And we met there and we had a beautiful weekend and we haven't physically met since, but we felt, I, I felt very connected to Larian from the moment I met her. And you'll, I'm sure, know why when you listen to her. She's just a beautiful, beautiful woman. And yeah, the one thing I wanted to start by saying as well is that that particular weekend, it felt to me it was 2015, and we each had um, sort of a little healing session individually with this man. And um, Ira came out of that weekend going home with a very strong sense my life was going to change very dramatically. Um, it just was so clear and I, I had no idea what. But what happened two months later was I was diagnosed with breast cancer and it set me on a whole new trajectory in my life that I wouldn't change one moment of as difficult as it was. And this is part of these conversations, how as well these challenges that we face really you know having gone through them that they often are the catalyst to help us move into a greater expression of ourselves and into our authenticity and that is why I think it's really valuable for us to share as women and share our stories so we can learn from each other um so that was my experience and I it's sort of a long introduction here I just again with with that time period I feel it's sort of part, I don't know, Larry, when you introduce yourself now, that if you felt the same around 2016 as well, it's going to be quite a big shift for a lot of people. And so without further ado, firstly, I would like to introduce beautiful Larry and Williams from Wales. Hi, Larry, and thank you so much for Hello. coming on. So good to see you, Celine. Yeah, you too. You too. We don't do it enough. But it's, no. we're connected all the time and we can. Well, the voicemails help. Yeah, yeah do. don't they? Yeah. And yeah. I just want to ask you firstly, because I just I was thinking about it this morning. In that particular weekend, that retreat that we were on, did you feel was yeah. there anything when you were leaving that you felt, wow, you know, something's happening in my life? It or was, did you... Well, it's funny because I'd met man when I first started my herbal medicine journey uh, in Ireland, of course. Um, yes, I forgot that. So that's how it all started. Um, and I was traveling to Ireland for a year, like back and forth, back and forth to Ireland. And so by the time a man was on the first year course, herbal medicine course. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're reminding me now. I forgot that. So uh, me and my friend, we came over. My friend Liz, I think, came with me to Ireland, uh, Ireland for his retreat. And we met you. And it was a... a a time of changes for sure. yeah definitely yeah so that was a lovely retreat yeah and I met you then you had your blonde curly hair and you were in similar jobs at the time because you were yes I was in the university university yeah international yeah you were international I was working at uh, which at the university I still work at actually but yeah mm. yeah lots of changes since that yeah lots of changes yeah, yeah. so you had started I forgot that now when you say it so you had already that's how I met man yeah okay yeah so just for anyone listening um and we'll talk about it or Larry and we'll talk about it today I I don't even know the right word to describe what you do but she works you 
Addy, when you have to, I'll share the link below. Look at her Instagram afterwards. She's the, the most beautiful work with plants and plant intelligence and plant consciousness. And if I'm right, you can describe all of this. But to me, it just really is another powerful way for women to connect with that sort of nature that we're we're of the same consciousness and just as we become more authentic it feels to me I mean I'm not doing the work that you're doing but I really feel very connected now to plants and animals and everything that is mm -hmm. of the same you know we're of the same nature so how, how did how did it's, the journey start for you with plants yeah, and herbal medicine yeah so yeah just to um, give a little bit of a background. So it all started with um, this book here. I don't know if you can see it. It's called mm -hmm. The Lost Language of Plants by Stephen Buna, who died this year, actually, sadly. But he's like, yeah, he was, he's been a big influence on a lot of people that work with plants. Mm -hmm. I always quote him. Um, I went to one of his last workshops and it changed, yeah, changed my life. His way of like, talking about it really turned me on to plants he has this amazing way he's like a he was a herbalist like an earth poet a, an amazing storyteller and that to me was a turning point probably before I met you and before I started going to Ireland because um, okay. I was at a, uh, a workshop with Stephen Buna and some other people and following that I was like this is it I want to experience what he's experiencing what he's talking about. He talks a lot about the metaphysical background of the mm. world and how we can all enter those states. And in particular, through the plants and learning, you know, it's almost like plant communication and all of the um, reading the invisible data that's coming from like anything that's alive, really. Yeah. He used to... Um, call it um asthesis when you breathe um it's like a what does he say it was an exchange of soul essence so when you breathe something in from something else and something else breathes from you it's not love he always says don't confuse it with love it's like information and your life is changed you know it can happen with plants humans mountains just when you're faced with something that takes your breath away his work, yeah, I would highly recommend reading. Oh all my his god, that's but beautiful. his workshop was life changing. So, what year and was he, that, Larian? Sorry, oh, 2014. Was 2004. So, something, but you he looked at, yeah, did you have an interest he before did. then? That oh, I have, yeah, it. long had an yeah. interest, okay. yeah, long, yeah, long had an interest, but his work really, um, oh, yeah, catapulted it. And his workshop, yeah, I've never been to a better workshop since. Um, where is he based or where was he based he was based in the states and he did his final workshop at the Schumacher College in Devon okay yeah, so yeah <laughs> but yeah amazing work but before then I'd done all the retreats you know we were talking earlier about retreats and I don't know you know I was a bit of a um I was partial to a guru wanting somebody to <laughs> tell me what the <laughs> meaning of life was. So I don't know that, you know, we talked years ago about the Muji retreats in Portugal and taking out hand retreats, all these Buddhist retreats. And, you know, I love meditation and I love, um, I think there is like healing in breath work and it's all good, just not all day and not like, I was doing like silent, you know, these week long mm. silent retreats mm. and they were lovely. But I then needed to function back in my own um, world yeah. and in my jobs. And it's a little, you know, it's a little tricky to do that. And I felt like with all of them, I wasn't building resilience. And I was, you know, that was missing from retreats, like resilience. And mm. that's where, like, when you work with plants, you get some resilience and you get, you learn the secret teachings directly from the plants um, yourself. So, yeah, that kind of build in that missing link to me so yeah went to the retreat with Buna uh, loved it then he recommended the teacher an amazing teacher called Nikki Darrell in Ireland in your lovely country and I love Ireland anyway so I was working and got traveling to Ireland doing this uh, herbal medicine course where I met man he okay. was there too yeah. mm -hmm. 
And that was a year. And towards the end of the year, I remember thinking, okay, the next couple of years will be like clinical training and da da da. And I remember being outside with our teacher and she was like saying, and you'll see below, like she had like a medicine garden. You'll see her Robert beginning to come through. And I was like, oh gosh, I'm seeing her Robert. Her Robert is like a lovely plant. And I was like, I'm just seeing soil and like green. And, you know, I didn't have like the eyes to see what she was seeing. Um, and it just gave me like a bit of a realization how how little I knew. And if I can't ID plants, how can I like work with them? You know, like pretend I'm like a herbalist and dispense them because I couldn't ID anything. So mm. I shelved that uh, after the first year. I did the first year apprenticeship and that was that. Um, oh, herbalism, yeah, okay. Mm. So like you speak with anybody in the plant world, their route to like working with plants is always never straightforward. It's always this non-linear approach. Um, and then I shelved it and then met you 2020. When, when did you say it was? 2015? 2015, yeah. The end yeah. was yeah, was Christmas 2015. Yeah. Met you during that. So I was still like hiatus, what to do, breaks, but you know, still I still had this lovely connection with the island because I just love it. Um so met you there, and that was and then 2000 towards the end of 2016 I began to feel this like boom 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 again this urgency to like I need to like learn like what's growing around me I don't you know I knew a nettle and a uh you know maybe two plants I could identify <laughs> just like ridiculous and but I had this sense of urgency I need to learn but that, and we didn't have there were no local teachers at the time here in North Wales and so I found a teacher, another amazing teacher called Fiona Campbell down in Devon. And she took on in 2017, she you had to like apply for it. And she took on like 10 apprentices and we would follow the we would all go there once a month for three days wild camping um, and like live like hunter gatherers for three days wow. over a period of a year. So we would learn like the local plants throughout the year. We'd be living together, camping together, cooking together. It was amazing. She's another like Fiona. She's there. There's other people there on the feet, you know, along the path. All these lovely people. She was, yeah, a very special teacher too. Um, had a very um, unique way of, um, yeah, just introducing you to wild food. It was, she is, yeah pretty amazing um so I did that um with her for a year in and 2016. then yes so we're 20 yeah. so that was yeah so it started the course started with her 20 I think it was 2017 but the pool that urgency was 2016 I was oh, getting like oh almost my. like spidey senses mm. I need to like not go to the supermarket to shop you know I was going to farm shops and stuff but this impulse you know maybe just something knowing something that survival instinct so yeah my path has actually gone um for the last eight I you know you were asking what like wild means and it's it's kind of like a background wildness for me because I've got my regular day job full-time job yeah you know, I'm not living on yeah. grid anymore it's like a quiet wildness in the background so I yeah basically for the last eight years nearly eight years now I've been um gathering my own wild food locally um, here so lots of coastal plants lots of seaweeds lots of and inevitably you end up like learning about their medicinal qualities just through that um working with them community you know gathering yeah. them you're in their environment and you just yeah you kind of get into you know there's always truth is found in nature plants don't like to be manipulated and you learn that quickly when you actually out there gathering and you're holding them and I'm very I need to feel things I need to smell things I need to work with them um to get to their like essence so that's how yeah so I basically just eat the local wild food that's growing in my area wow well signs on yeah. because when you were beautiful when I met you but you're even more beautiful that's possible but that sort of that's a sort of shines from you so would you say then so that you're you're starting out with plants and you sort of started in herbalism 
was it sort of looking at more the medicinal qualities of plants and then you're saying it's sort of evolved into now it's getting to know them and the sort of the energy of them and then you felt oh I need to be sort of eating that you know this feeding myself with yes with the plants is yes. that sort of so, what how it evolved well we're so lucky here mm. like I'm you know like it's, it's not like um anybody but you can do it and it's just you know like I said I have my regular full-time mm. day mm. job I'm in a flat I'm not an off-grid somewhere yeah. oh I'd love to be I'd love to be off-grid somewhere but I ha do have access to the coast you know and we have so many gorgeous wild coastal edibles here that are like our elders you know so it's like this it's just amazing the amount of information like you can learn through these like just by interacting with them just by eating them it's like the wild food just and it satisfies satisfies me on all the levels it satisfies my like survival instinct because you're out there you're like gathering wild food but it also just works it your physical emotional mental faculties and it just you switch on once you've tasted the wild like Stephen Bune used to say once you've tasted wild waters there's no going back you know and once you've tasted like wild food you're like something inside you changes forever and it's like a you just become I don't know they kind of it's like a little coding that happens they unlock little codes inside of you that you know well-meaning humans try, try try to like give you know give you guidance and stuff but when nature there's just yeah there's just no manipulating while plants don't like to be manipulated and neither do humans and in working with the plants you begin to but you know you begin to learn hmm this plant is good for this this plant is good for that yes they have all the amazing minerals my wild food teacher I, tries to get us to out of respect to her I try and not use the word foraging you know it's all mm. it's kind of hipster now like everybody's uh, foraging. You know, since lockdown, yeah since lockdown everybody's a forager a mountaineer <laughs> everything, you know everything became yeah. like which is great you know it's that every yeah. we're connected to everything we have so much information available mm. amazing but yeah, my she didn't like the word uh, foraging, and I was like, oh, in my like, as I got into like maybe my second year of like gathering my lo the local plants around me, I I started to understand why because, um, you know, the foraging has this kind of like this kind of thing that you're scavenging for food, and you know, you're getting like free food. That's the scraps. When really you're getting the gold, you know, you're getting like all these beautiful coastal wild plants that are thriving in like in the environment you're living in. So they are perfectly designed for us because we live, we're living in that environment. Yeah. And, you know, something like sea beet that grows on the uh, shingle beaches here. It's amazing. It's so like its uh, ancestor is like from the beetroot family. It has so many good minerals. It's like fed by um, seaweed. So it's like broken off seaweed. So it's just nutritious and it's delicious. So I get what she was saying now. You're finding the gold. This, these are all the kind of all these uh, wild coastal greens and seaweeds. You know, the top chefs mm. want to eat them. So mm. it's like... Yeah, I get what she was saying. Really, but yeah. And you ended more, up, and yeah, and it's interesting how you've ended up in a place where you have access to, you know, all of these, you know, and I'm sure in every environment where I am as well, it, it sort of struck me the other day that where you ended up or end up now or where particularly where we all ended up during lockdown, there was sort of a, for many reasons, there was, there was, mm -hmm. we ended up where we were meant to be physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and when you talk about yeah. nature, I love that about um, when you say it doesn't like to be manipulated because mm. I can remember so many times feeling sort of lost or, you know, just going from my life sort of say before cancer and then in through cancer and then into lockdown and trying to find, I'm trying to find myself and trying to find a way forward. And I can just remember it was nature. I was sort of blow over time. I started to notice as I was walking. 
and looking at plants. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know them in the way that you do, but I was more getting tuned into their cycles and rhythms and the harmony and how just all these messages kept coming and the sort of uh, yeah. communication sort of started. Yeah. Yeah, because we have ended up living, haven't we, such manipulated, we were talking about even manipulation in relationships and everything before, and that how, yeah, the simplicity of just seeing how nature works yeah when it works in harmony and and how did that did that play a big when you when you say that you know they don't like to be manipulators how did you how did you come to that like did you you know is it just from observation or working with the plants how did you a bit of both yeah observation mm -hmm. seeing plants mm -hmm. you know you see like weeds don't never grow in rows for a reason they don't like to be um, mm -hmm. manipulated either and they come through concrete and you know we're trying yes. to get rid of them and you yeah. want the weeds with with yeah. walls, you want the ones that can grow through concrete. You know, yeah. that's where the medicine is. That's what builds the resilience. Oh, I love and that. Yeah. living where I live, it's, I want the plants that are like, wow, they're thriving, uh, you know, with the coastal winds on the shingle beach. It's not, you know, it's not, the, it's not tropical here. <laughs> you want the ones that still <laughs> bloom. You know, there's wild roses there that bloom amazingly in, in against the winds. It's just, yeah. Yeah, you see how they thrive. Sorry, Sorry. I didn't mean to, you know, just a little delay there. Sorry, you continue. Yeah, I was just saying how the contrast between, I remember um, coming from like a wild weekend and then visiting a friend and she was like excited to show me her allotment and it just felt dead, you know, the contrast. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. and the allotment felt dead and oh, in comparison to like, yeah. The wild, yeah. Yeah. And even when you describe it, it sounds like you have to be fairly resilient to yourself to get to the, you know, you're saying they're out yeah. in these places. So physically on every level, it's yeah, you're um yeah. You, you know, you're sensing that. Yeah. And and in terms of the like even the new tree, just we'll talk as well. I'd love to talk a little bit about the, you know, um the plants as well that people can maybe use themselves or learn a little bit about that can help them in their lives whether it's with if you're going through stress or overwhelm or anxiety or you know it might be um interesting for people to hear yeah how what sort of plants maybe you might well medicinally what, recommend what um yeah first off i would say if you're dealing with something you always go to like a clinical herbalist mm -hmm. practitioner like i have clinical amazing clinical herbalist uh in my area you know so they are well trained in their protocols and what what you should take for specific conditions mm -hmm. but just out of like um something of interest is they you know all the herbalists say that the plants we need grow within like a five mile radius uh, radius of where we live. So like keep, maybe just have like a gentle look what's in your garden, which plant calls to you, you know, if there's a specific plant that's kind of catching your eye. Because I think if you remember uh -huh. uh, a few weeks ago, Nettle was catching yeah. you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it might be again, but um, yeah. yeah. Of course be sensible because, you know, there's... So one plant could you know one's dinner sometimes and one could kill you so you have to be yeah. sensible and mm. cross-reference and all that mm. but yeah a lot of the times the plants we need are around us you know and you were talking earlier about uh the lockdown situation and i remember um working a lot one summer every day after work i'd be working with a plant called fireweed i was telling you about fireweed mm, because yes your story, love... your story embodies fireweed because i a fireweed grows on damaged land damaged soil um and it starts off like this size and when it's this size you can um, eat it like asparagus and then it keeps growing to like my like as tall as I am, I don't, yeah, I'm, not, mm. I'm not tall, but five foot something, which is tall. And it has these like long leaves that you make, a, you can make a tea out of. And then bright, beautiful pink, like fuchsia, fla fuchsia flowers. But I remember during like the lockdown summers, I would like go to my local forest drive when I wasn't supposed to be driving probably. And I the roads literally were lined with like um 
fireweed because they grow tall and they like torches, you know, like the bright, like pink flowers. And they line the road. And I drive to this forest and I find my fire, like long fireweed. And I just be rolling, like making my tea in the forest. And I was like, this is like really lovely to be doing throughout lockdown. And I remember feeling into it and it was all like, yeah, it heals damaged lands. It's like the teacher of um, uh, healing intergenerational traumas because all these like, there's a thing that a lot of herbalists call the doctrines of signatures where you can see like patterns in the plant that will tell you, you know, which part of the body is good for. Like anything that's red is usually good for the heart. Things like okay. and stuff like that. And in this like uh, file, you have like... Um, these long leaves like steps like you're like intergenerational uh, family and it's kind of thrives like it's still it's very transforming it thrives after deplorable situations it's like the it's it was a good time for like any traumas that were wow. kind of internally happening with people during that time and it kind of still she rises like the phoenix you know and not only she kind of heals the land and makes it you know healthy it blooms this beautiful like fuchsia pink oh, flowers and it was during that time it was like you know because during that time it was weird right and you kind mm. of it was like a runway and you knew who your people were pretty quickly mm. 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 like lights you know yes. and the fire it, like lights lights this is like the light keep going that way and it was just a beautiful um a lot of the time when you're working with plants it's good to not to know what they meant you know not to go to the books and yeah feel okay like they're okay yeah a lovely way to do it is like have a cup of tea with some with a plant you know if you like i've got rose and hawthorn like in here beautiful. you can mm. sit with a plant you know see mm. if that information will come back and forth um have a tea and usually like when i've been gathering wild food like i've been gathering sea beet like for the last six years you'll usually notice by the way you feel afterwards that will re that usually reveals what other medicinal um qualities there are in that plants because mm -hmm. with something like so after you've like been drinking say rose tea uh -huh. You'll begin to feel like, oh, you'll feel calm, you know, because rose is good for anxiety, it's good for the heart. You'll feel like your heart a bit like heart open, heart open, but a very different um, to something like a hawthorn berry, which is very good for the heart, solid wise, okay. like for the mm. organ, but has a very different um, energy to it. It's like this heart strong energy to it. But ways to work, yeah, I love, um, you know, you don't have to take tinctures. Tinctures can sometimes be too strong for me. Mm. Um, and the Emma, the clinical herbalist I work with, she used to tell me, I say, oh, they're quite strong for me. And she said, she think like the potency of the wild food and the medicines around us, they're probably stronger now because we're entering this, yeah. you know, yeah. like a, just a different stage that the humans need it. So sometimes a tea is enough to like... Okay. So you would just, yeah, you don't need to make anything too concentrated. Just make a tea with just brew it with hot water. You just make a tea with a rose, it, wh whatever calls to you, yeah, really. Yeah. You know, I like to bathe. I love seaweed. Seaweeds were like my gateway plant. Like people love mushrooms. And I was like in awe of seaweeds. Like it was mm. just, a, yeah, a very otherworldly, you know, they teach you like about gracefulness and flow. It's just, yeah, very, um, yeah, beautiful algae. But so I like to bathe. It, I like to learn through bathing in herbs and seaweeds, mm. making a, you know, a, a nourishing tea and just sitting with it, drinking it and noticing, always noticing how you feel. Okay. Yeah. Afterwards. Like if you feel like rosemary, if I had rosemary here now with you, we'd sniff it and you'd be like, boom, your brain mm. would be going boom, 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 because it's, you know, it's good for circulation it's good for memory it's good for focus it's good for a whole host of things you'll feel like your sinuses like clear because you feel it working uh, on your body in different ways and then you begin to see oh i bet it's good for this that if it's clearing uh, my sinuses okay, um yeah. it's really good for colds and whatever and then you can check the books for reference but yeah, yeah i and 
another thing I like to do is like I like to have them on me. I like to wear them. You know, I like the ladies' mantle. I collected earlier. This is ladies' mantle, which I can see. That. see it. Oh, that looks beautiful for anyone yeah. watching. You could be just listening, but yeah. And can I just see the leaf when you take up one on its own? It's just yeah. beautiful. So it's I mean, just it looks yeah. Really did soft. A, a plant immersion with ladies' mantle with oh, wow. yeah the plant consciousness stuff yeah. That um, is gorgeous. It's just a beautiful ship. Yeah. You can eat this like a, you can eat this in your salads. Um, it's a very medicinal herb for women in particular. Um, okay. And it's a very different country. To, I presume it is location to location. Like when you mentioned the fireweed, I don't know if that's in Ireland. I'm not sure if I. Ah yes. I, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it's, gone to, it's gone to see now. Mm -hmm. well, I've got the top of it here. Um. Because I tried to go when I went out earlier, because I was saying you embody fire with, with your story, you know, oh, from like your mm. cancer, and then you, st you know, you transformed it, you're an author now, second book? Second book, yes, hopefully a third at some point. So this is, oh, the, it's gone it, to it? seed, um, I found like just a bit of one, so that's like fireweed, um, that's I just the top that of it, but like, yeah, they it's purple sort of them, flowers, like, isn't it? It's sort of purple. Is it purple? Yes, like yeah, they've they've kind of gone limp now because I Yeah. That's so interesting, Larry. Because I was walking by the beach the other day and I found myself, it was actually that I was firewood. And I stopped and I and this doesn't happen to me, and I was playing with it, I was smelling it and talking to it, and I had no idea mm. it was fireweed, but it was growing up well, on the rocks beside the sea. This is in I Russia, thought. it's called like uh, the warrior. They they call it the warrior plant because when they make a tea with it, with it, you get this warrior like type yeah. energy, you know, which was great for that time, challenging times too. A few years ago, you needed that kind of boom, 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 come on, come on, you know. Yes. And if you just make a tea. You strip the um, leaves. Okay. Like this, I'll just do it quickly with you. Yeah. You take the leaves like that, yeah. and then you ferment them. You roll them in your hand. Okay. And in rolling them, um, what's lovely is like you're getting like whatever your signature is, like it mixes with the plant, so the plant has more of a, an understanding of what you need. So that's in you know symbiotic yes. relationship can happen. But it's you make the tea, you ferment it, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's ready in about four or five days, and it turns into this beautiful green tea type tea, cherry tea, and that's. Very lovely for digestion. It gives you that energy of that warrior energy. Yeah. Okay, I must try it's, that. I've been feeling that sort of warrior call or, you know, when you, mm -hmm. as you said, that sort of energy is, okay, it's time to get up and move and do something. You know, yes, there's a sort of yeah. cycle. I, I don't know, have you been feeling that? It's, it's sort of something yeah, rising. Like, yeah. So, you know, it's like getting to know, you've got to invest the time to like mm -hmm. learn this way about plants it's mm. invest it's like getting to know a person yeah. it's like getting to know a person literally and it's they've been here before a long time before we were here so they're like my yeah the great teachers really I'm so super grateful for yeah. but you'll see different plants have their different personalities you know even the wild like a lot of the the plants I have they're medicinal um but even the ones I eat on a daily basis, there's a difference in all of them. Like the seed beer is very friendly. It's like, take a seed. How long have you lived here? It's that type of energy. You're always happy when you're collecting seed beer. It's this happy energy, social. It'll introduce you to the other kind of wild food that's growing around it. It's very happy. because So when you've gathered it, you know, like, you've embodied the sea bee plant or a sea kale which grows exactly similar location on a single beach it's got a very different energy like it has this like i'm ready for battle energy it's full of sulfur it's mm. uh, the same with uh, rock samphire rock samphire and sea kale grows yeah. in very uh, similar situation um environment has a very different energy to sea beets say you just have this like amazing yeah this like ready it's like again a bit of a warrior you know and these plants were like they're always like looking out towards the ocean like they're like protectors of the land almost and yeah very 
all that yeah it's just like a, yeah scratching the surface really you always feel like a two-year-old when you're working with plants like you know nothing like as and as you begin to think like you're getting into a, a layer of something something else just yeah, yeah gets you just just amazing I just it makes me want to go out and start exploring with plants because I've been feeling that myself you know that sort of so would your, if for anyone listening and sort of going, oh yeah, I got this sounds so, I really want to learn more. Would would your advice just to be intuitively, just trust and like what you were saying there, go out and explore? Go out sometimes. and like, um, oh, Stephen Bune used to say like anything will, um, I don't know if it was he that said it or he was quoting some somebody else. Anything will tell you it's, uh, anything will tell you it's secrets if you love it enough. You know, we're like, humans are the same you may you know you give something time to you know you nurture something you give it love and something will be revealed and these are the experiences I you know I read about over 15 years ago now and they're just like oh it's just when you get it and that imprinting happens and you begin to get like small signatures of the information from that plant that that plant has shared with you and it's Mm -hmm. a it's a two-way thing. The the plant's getting a human experience too. And how would you um, see the plant change, or can you notice how the plant might um, change as a well, result it's of like this you interaction? Get, it's it's almost like you get. We probably had. We probably had the same. Um, oh, what do you call it? The same navigation mm-hmm. skills before, like. For example, every February now, I'll taste wild garlic in my mouth and I'll go to the spot where it grows and it's coming out. Mm-hmm. So it's just natural. So that's your, before yeah. I've even gone to It's like, you know, you've got, you don't need the coordinates, you know. And the mm-hmm. more you work with wild plants, the more they'll introduce you to other plants and the more they'll reveal their medicinal qualities to you. You know, they've got the minerals and the nutrition. Yes. They've got a whole different level of, and different, say you and I were working with a particular plant. We might agree upon like, oh yes, it's clearing us. We feel calm or whatever, but that plant will also possibly reveal something to you. That's just special to you that only you uh, would need to hear. And if a plant is calling you, there's usually a medicine that you need in that plant. And that maybe that plant wants to, Want you to share that knowledge of, you know, yeah. of them because I, I'm not sure who else in my locality is eating the wild food that I'm eating. So it's good if, if yeah. More and how has that really changed you? Can you talk yeah. about even for how has that changed you? Even the diet of just eating wild food. Well, you can't. You, you know, it? everybody, uh, uh, my like fellow like apprentices, they all say the same. It you just there's like an aliveness within you that you didn't have, you don't have before. And when you're back into like, um, you know, you're like, you can like eat things like you do eat, obviously other normal vegetables. I, mm. you know, I still eat broccoli, but it's not quite the same. Yeah, mm. it's definitely, mm. yeah. Once you've tasted the wildness, you, you don't go back. And once you've had just that experience with a plant too, that's changed you on a fundamental level. Once a plant mm. has shared with you and healed you or, um just shared a teaching with you you know that's you kind of do it sounds all like no but like it, it's it's it sound you know when you talk about you know coming really into I don't know that's a big part of my life now is this sort of and I think many of us are on it like there's there's definitely a shift On the planet, I think everybody might be feeling in a different way. To me, I'm experiencing it as a sort of call to come more into my own power and my authenticity and to sort of shift as part of that. A lot of things that are not. Don't feel um, the more I connect with the natural world, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say in lots of different ways. It's showing me what I am carrying that is not natural to me if that makes sense yes, and yeah. it's helping me let go and read and re- remember that I have that power like you're saying when you eat you know the aliveness the natural vitality it's like it's reminding you of that 
wild, authentic nature, that true nature that we all have. But we have gone so far in many ways. Yeah, and off nature, track. nature always tries to return to a place of balance. Mm -hmm. And in working with these plants, it's you know the knock-on effect is they they will always bring you back into balance. Yeah. and you know just like you don't have to like change your diet or it's mm. when we when you were taking more um nettle you know the strong nettle infusions you knew when you had sufficient yeah and we were talking about how different plants you know they teach us about boundaries and having yeah. that blew my mind you know, that, telling yeah. the truth telling the truth is pretty wild these days and yeah trying to you know getting it used to be maybe in the past because you had the asking before when you first contacted me what does wildness mean for you and like in the past you know gone are the days where it's like women's circles red tents and howling at the mood it's like this getting clean water like you know my friends who are kind of uh who are raising like amazing kids and children and unschooling and then learning and trying to do everything you know getting clean water is pretty wild and as I said, just rem not forgetting all this information, you know, for me, you know, it's pretty wild. How can we, we've gone, like you said, we've gone so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's just rein it in a bit. And wild nature does that anyway. Uh, yeah. You know, you can, people do it, anything that's, you know, people do it in when they're climbing mountains, hiking, surfing, there's that interaction that happens. And, you know, if, if you're into animism where everything is alive and there's always something yeah. passing through everything mm. yeah for me it's just wild wild plants do it yeah <laughs> yeah and once you start to understand i think i think there's a huge i've just felt there's a huge um i don't know if empowerment is the right word but an aliveness and um a sense of like creativity as well that's another aspect it just feels that yeah all of these you mentioned earlier I don't know if it was just before we were recording how nearly feeling like something's being unlocked or on um, that's yes, the sense yeah. I'm I'm getting a lot now from being out just I think from being more connected to myself less stimulation being more in nature living a slower life I can feel these um but it's like sometimes these little like somebody's turning on a switch inside mm -hmm. with different knowings about different things and it probably comes in different ways for different people like we're all it's not to say for anyone listening you know that okay plat you know we, it, there can be many different ways in our lives that's the oh, unique exactly yeah yeah for each of us that we sort of um like for me, I've joined a drumming class, a circle, a drumming yes, circle, a number. Of I months. saw like, amazing. Yeah. yeah, and it just it's like, well, there's that's something in this, like this ancestral calling. There's something calling very deep within me. I and, love drumming. Yeah, yeah, mm. and it just it's it seems to sort of connect me to something greater. And just I think we're at a time, and I'm meeting more women all the time like this who are. I suppose that we have what um, we talk about, you know, the divine, the energy. You talked about balance there and how we've been out of balance. And my understanding of it is, we, you know, we have been living in a very patriarchal system for thousands of years. And the divine, the more feminine, what we're talking about here, you know, the intuitive, the instinctive, the, the natural trusting that is rising. And I, I, I sense that around me. So I think it's really important like what you're sharing here for people to understand this is naturally we need to be in balance it's not saying you know we don't need the masculine energy obviously we do because we have to get up and do things and take action yes but yeah, it's been we've been yeah. so I mean I lived I've talked about I lived probably predominantly from a masculine energy because of the system and the world that we're in yes and now yeah, can you talk a little bit about because it's just interesting you had mentioned you know you have a full-time job as well and you were working in the university when I met you and I still have, <laughs> yeah I, was, I have not yet <laughs> I am sort of still it's been a different you hadn't leaped out of the system yeah. yeah I was sort of yeah boom ejected out and trying to find balance in a different way that's how I've been guided to do it so how, you know, and many people I, I have conversations with will often say, well, you know, that's fine. I'd love to live like this and I'd love to whatever, but I can't mm -hmm. and I have to pay the mortgage and I have to pay the bills. So you're someone who's mm -hmm. here managing, you know, balancing um, all of that. Yeah, how, you know, yeah it's 
it's it's not always easy. It's like balancing the mundane and the magic. You're always like just like the earth fine tuning, how the plants fine tune. And you know, sometimes it's um yeah. It, I'm very appreciative that my work is like, you know, it keeps it gives me my livelihood, keeps me, you know, it's all, almost like a luxury item nowadays to be able to go out and gather wild food and do all this stuff. Because if that was my livelihood and I was depending on that to give me my basic needs, security, it would maybe, oh, with the love for it go, it's quite nice now that it's, they both support me in different ways. And yes. that's what I've had to learn to um come to come, come to terms with really because you know all these courses I've done they, I've been working to fund them and that's how I've managed to do it it's not like love and light and yeah. things will happen and you have to yeah balance the mundane and the magic and it's you know if, if it's very doable if you kind of invest the time yeah, yeah. your free time in yeah. into it that is, isn't it? I think um, I remember Mon, who we did the retreat with, saying that. Yes. I remember asking him, going, I'm really, this is now eight years ago, I'm really struggling. Something is calling me to something different. And yeah. I could feel I was dying inside. I can remember yeah. just that feeling and not knowing. Yeah. And and he did say to me, and I, and I think that the point is the journey it, the, is unique for everyone and there is no one size fits all. So, you know, again anyone listening you know it's you have to follow what that that is calling you inside but he had said to me and I thought it was good advice he said because he had worked in banking for years yeah. and had always dabbled well it always been yeah. a from, you know yeah. since he was born and he said you know sometimes we have to keep two things going because yes there are different you know there is the physical world we have to survive in as it is right now and I feel that's shifting but and we're all going to be doing different things that will help us find that balance within ourselves I had to go from one extreme of the pendulum I believe to the other you know sometimes that's called mm. for sometimes it's maybe yeah. more I had come so extreme I feel like I have to be taken out down stopped completely for a few years and then restarted mm. again and um, but I guess you were living a more balanced life <laughs> but that's but it's it, it is it's lovely to hear that like as if you if your heart is if you find that passion it probably helps you sustain because you're saying as as you said you're doing it knowing what this is serving for you as well and you know how yes that's you. the secret because otherwise yeah like I've had moments like you've had too um and it's just knowing that it's like it, it serves that purpose and also to be honest sometimes I could easily lose 10 years lost in the plant world in that metaphysical background I'm quite happy there mm. I'm very introspective you know mm. I'm there's a lot of I'm very there's a lot going on inside that I'm happy to stay in and what the work does it's like okay it's time to boom it's time to it's, it's a little bit it can be grounding sometimes from that kind yes. of state you know just yeah plan well, when you, uh, yeah and when you understand or I understand it is like I'm a, a spirit a consciousness here in a body having an experience so yeah I can't be I I would yeah. happily sometimes as well drift away and stay <laughs> so stay in that world it's so nice yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then but yeah. I've yeah but I've learned as well like you, I, I remember thinking why do I keep being pulled away from this into more mundane like what you call the mundane and the magic but it is because I know I need that grounding and we're here to live physical lives as well. Like mm. it's not, so it's, it's just, it's very, yeah, it's just sort of very reassuring to hear for anyone who's struggling. You obviously have to listen to what your body is telling you. Um, And the plants seem a wonderful way if someone wants to just start exploring is even and to go out, as you said, on a walk, and if something what grows around, around you, yeah, what grows around you, yeah, yeah, start taking notice, and you know, even uh, you know, everybody knows a dandelion, and all parts of the dandelion can be used, and you know, that's a, te a an amazing teacher. Yes, it's good for digestion; it'll get um, heat from your body. It's good for a lot of stuff. You know, you can read what it's good for. But on that like other level, um, you know, it's a very it's a 
if you're finding like com a communication communicating difficult or like speaking just telling the truth in situations it's very direct like you have a few cups of tea of, with dandelion and it's like you'll be just telling it how it is there's no like messing wow. with dandelion you like begin and even if you do this and you're like oh I don't you're not noticing it your life is busy you're just having a you might know you might not notice something straight away. You might not notice how the the drinking dandelion tea feels. You know, you might go to the toilet or something. If you're constipated, you'll notice. Oh, it's clearing me. Brilliant. But the more you eat the plants, because you can eat the leaves, you can wow. you know eat mm. the flowers, the roots. Um, and a local homeopath recently um told me a little bit more about the roots, which I had no idea about, which was very useful for for me. Okay. But even eating them, you'll begin maybe maybe you're thinking you're not noticing any difference, but surely but but slowly what tends to happen is you'll something will change. You'll notice like, oh, you're saying something you wouldn't usually say, or you're saying, you know, your gait, your kind of posture may change as you kind of begin as these plants try and just work with you to bring you back to a balance. Yeah. You don't need to change anything. There's not drastic yeah. change. Yeah. It's just gently introducing a little bit of wild each week. And just to get those like switched on, things, switched on. on. Yeah, yeah, switched on. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, when I sometimes when I'm foraging, somebody will stop and ask, What are you foraging? Are you worried about dog pee or something? And then I'll get them to try, like, oh, it's this. And there's a lovely plant that grows next to the sea beet called um sea purslane. And it has it's it's a lovely one to give to people because it's got that lovely, it's like mash some if you've tasted that it's a really salty bite it's gorgeous ah. so they eat that and you see the boom boom because wow. it's like a real brain food it gets like the it fires something in the brain so because it's full of magnesium and it's full of yeah lovely yeah. stuff but just getting like something you know it's like activating yeah. something yeah you know? yeah that is amazing and when you say like even in each area like each whatever is local you know they say you can only grow where you're planted I remember somebody saying that yes, to me, you know yeah. but I was looking at the faraway fields are greener I'd looked why am I not living that life but there's something yes. in in it all that it's all this, yeah like I it? sometimes wish Celine if you said I've got off-grid land for you here with spring water I'd be there with bells on however <laughs> like you said maybe where we are where we're supposed to be yeah. <laughs> for now anyway and even if for the people living, because I am by mountains meet the sea type area in North Wales, it's gorgeous. Oh but um, even, you know, in cities, plants are growing, the plants you need will be there. The weeds yeah. that are coming through the curbs and yeah. green spaces, the, the, the ones you need will be there. I feel that definitely you can never underestimate whether it's the plants, anything in nature, you know, it's like the balance, but also the timing. Often I felt, oh, yeah, I want to. Um, yeah, I know this is a process and I know it's a journey and life is a journey. Yes. And there's no destination and all all of this. Yeah. And there's something yeah. in me sort of wants to to speed it up or slow it down. But it's like nature will always will. If I if, if I slow down too much, it's sort of, you know, when you talked about the warrior spirit. And it's funny mm -hmm. how I felt really called that fireweed. Fireweed. And yeah, it's so funny that mm. I didn't know what it was. And there's another, um, I can't remember, there was some other plant recently, but it's it's like, it's to trust that, isn't it? It's to trust, because you're shown. And, yes, you know, because you trusted, because you, when you asked me about nettle, like that was mm. a couple of years ago, and you would have been feeling very depleted at that mm. stage, mm. and boundaries were weak. And I remember mm. you were just having a cup, having a cup, and slowly mm. but surely, yeah. yeah. I that you'll be nourished it. and that's a good way for people to start like a herbal yeah. infusions yeah um because you don't have to change your diet and just in introducing these wild foods you'll just begin to crave what you were craving if it was like bad or whatever that'll just go away as you're nourishing yourself on all yeah. the levels yeah. you know it's not just like oh what's good for this what's good for that it's we're all different we all carry our little holes of things and things affect every plants affect people differently there's some yeah. commonalities but they'll be yeah because we're each such a unique aren't we such a unique um 
expression yeah yeah everything is yeah. so um yeah I would definitely recommend anyone listening Re- net, nettle I just found it was a great introduction to me it's not that I've learned a huge amount since but it's it's definitely I think influenced my my taste in food like I started growing a little bit of spinach and kale out the back I know like everyone yes. probably did during lockdown but <laughs> it was still a lovely feeling to yeah eat a live food if I go and buy it from the supermarket now or somewhere mm. and even just a basic fruit or an apple I go it just doesn't taste like a, this isn't alive and yet no. we still like we sort of see that still as okay so how can we be alive and fully functioning and really flourishing in our lives if we're feeding like mentally physically spiritually emotionally all of it if we're feeding ourselves junk food you know. that, well, food that's dead, isn't it? It's just feels, yes. yeah. The food feels dead, and we need our we need our minerals working. We need the functioning of our thinking minds working. We yeah. need to be able to question things. We need to be able to think for ourselves. And that's what plants can like remind you of. Like, boom, what are you doing? What are you thinking? This is like just they're just yeah. teachers of truth, and yeah. it's like no manipulation, and it comes from this pure frequency. You know, not to use the words frequency and stuff but cannot be manipulated they they're benevolent they have our best interests you know at heart it's like mm. just the earth just the you know I, that sounds a bit wacky but just yeah no but i think most people would, would on some level well i think would get that i mean you know even if you just say going down for a swim in the sea i live near the sea yes. here and that's yeah. become a huge thing in the last you few years wild swim. <laughs> And, you know, whatever, you know, we'll all be drawn to different things, but there's no doubt people who do it all the time say they feel so much better and alive. And I think that is a big part of it, isn't it? Feeling alive. Yes. We are here to be alive. We are living um, creatures, you know. And yes. And you being the- in Ireland, you have like all the seaweeds. Like we have I the know. seaweeds. You have the seaweeds, you yeah. know, and the seaweeds are just like, boom other world and such a beautiful teacher of like gracefulness like I said earlier and just this flow you know when you're like in the like a a rock pool staring at seaweed it's like entering a different time that's like another lost there's like a lost language of plants but there's like this lost language of seaweeds that feel really like old but in island you know I I, well when you say that yeah they used to yeah, I really, it's not funny when you said that. I, I felt this emotion when you even said that. I could feel this. Oh, get to I, the sea. Yeah, <laughs> I have started, you know, I have started noticing them when you did, I, I can picture them now in front of me, the colors and the shapes. And as you decide, that'll be shine off it. And it's full of uh, lot, every sort of mineral, isn't it, as well? All the minerals and also just like, yeah, nutritionally good, dense. You can like put them in a soup. You can put them in the bath you can make like boil the gel out of it it has like a lovely alginates that when you add it to like warm water and that gel can be used in your hair uh Beautiful. on your like face well thalassotherapy yeah. used to be a real yeah, thing yeah. well i would still have their yeah. seaweed baths. baths they do yeah um, luckily here somebody's opened like a seaweed bath which i, lo- I love that they've opened it um because it's local you know, because I've been bathing in seaweed since I'm doing my course. And just that, you know, bathing in the seaweed, you kind of use it on your skin. You just learn about just the secrets of seaweed. <laughs> yeah, secrets of seaweed. I love that. I think that's the the, the title of your Instagram page, isn't it? Yeah, it's because seaweed, well, every like like plant person loves mushrooms. And I love mush- my mushrooms too. Um, but seaweeds to me just like were this like gateway into to like this these experiences and then from the seaweeds it just went boom it's just so much to learn you know and, mm. and all the different seaweeds have different medicinal stuff too good stuff i've got some of my irish moss here <gasps> oh beautiful which I... is do you remember irish i don't know yet yeah, but in Ireland. um yeah you know because that's trending now too like irish moss is a thing like sea moss but irish moss if you were here and you'd smell it, it just it dries so well. It smells of like sweet ocean air. 
And this is like very good for like colds and stuff, you know, and traditionally they used to make pudding and stuff with it. And you can just make so many good things with this and you can collect it, gather it, dry it. And it looks it, beautiful. Yeah. Bathe in it. Yeah. And it smells beautiful. And you feel like you feel everything just clear. You mm. feel clear. And that's how you learn about, you know, the yeah. medicinal. Yeah. And we're probably intuitive you know like say going for a walk by the sea in the autumn or something mm. or you inhale the sea air and the seaweed you know without really thinking about it too much we sort of yeah. know and there I, is a sort of knowing isn't there that's sort of woken there's up there's a knowing yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think a lot of people associate seaweed with like the smell of sewage because it's always broken up seaweed that they see mm. and mm. you know i've seen over time how the broken up seaweed is just such good food for all the coastal plants that i gather so not mm. only in those like, coastal plants, I get that nutrition. I get the nutrition from the broken up seaweed because it's good fertilizer. Okay. But when you see like seaweed alive, so a, a live seaweed, they're always attached to the rock. Yeah. And uh, actually, so it's full moon tomorrow, right? Yes, we were talking tomorrow. about that early one, earlier for anyone who's feeling a little emotional. <laughs> so, you know, seaweed is like this container for like water signs, you know. Mm. like you and I mm. but during the full moon um you can the tide is out further so you can go to like the seaweeds that you couldn't usually get to and for me I can't even swim properly so it's like I need the tide to be like very low to get to the seaweeds but definitely if you're not in you being an island you should go for sea, okay. the seaweeds yeah. yes mm. that's that sounds like what's it's what's calling me is seaweed next I feel that actually I nearly feel like I I feel like I'm searching for a food and I can't figure out what it is, mm -hmm. but I need something more nutritious or something. And it's, yeah, maybe it's seaweed I need to. So before we finish up, what is the biggest shift that is, you know, the biggest shift you would say from working with plants? It's hard to like put into like one thing really. And it keeps evolving because, yeah. you know, I went from learning from knowing two plants and still I only maybe know 150 maybe 150 now I could identify which is still nothing in the totality of how many millions of plants there are but they've just filled and they continue to do so you know you still feel like a five-year-old always just learning you just feel so behind with everything so I'm still learning um you know and they just seem to kind of connect things that you didn't know needed like a little bit of like patching up and like just recently like I was saying you can just wear your plants I was oh. collecting the um oh hawthorn berries in my pocket I didn't have my basket and I just had like a like a pocket in one of these types of uh dungarees for anyone not dungarees, yeah yeah <laughs> And I didn't have my basket, so I was filling with the hawthorn berries like this <laughs> until I had like a chunk of it. And I thought, you know, it's hawthorn, you know, I've worked with hawthorn a little bit before, not as much as rose. And rose medicine is very heart opening. You feel very oh, lovely, high. Man used to say, didn't he? Rose, mm. rose was like high frequency. And I, I get it now. But I thought hawthorn was going to be like this. So I was walking back to my car with my little chunk of hawthorn berries. And I just had my hands on the wheel. And, you know, I'm not even eating them. I, they're just by my heart. And I could feel this jolt in my heart. And I thought, wow, the organ of the heart, I could feel like this, um, like it being like stitched back up, you know, the organ felt super strong. And I was like, boom. This is a different type of heart medicine. It's actually healing the muscle of the heart or the, mm. you know, the organ itself. Mm. Mm. And it's gathering like patches that you didn't even know had been fragmented. No idea. And I just had this like little internal vision of it, sewing it or patching, patching aspects of the heart to make it strong. And I remember like just feeling, gosh, yeah, when your heart stops, because I'm, I overthink, over worry, over. Mm. But it was like it took all the energy into my heart in its rightful place, you know, where yeah. Yeah. you need to be heart strong, not head strong, you know. Mm. And it was like it was everything was balanced again. Um, and I was like, oh, this is it. I'm feeling from the heart where I should. And our brain listened to the heart in a solid way. And that was a very different medicine from Hawthorne. I hadn't even taken this was just wearing them. 
So, That's incredible. you know, having That's a tea a... and stuff would be. So it's those little magic moments that you just, yeah. it's just it as keeps... one. I know, I know. But it's that connection, obviously. It, it's, it's... It just, I get the sense of it's just bringing you back into this sense of sort of power and aliveness and vitality and everything and, and sort yeah. of a trust in you know a trust in yourself as well like we've been so conditioned to always be looking to the outer world for answers mm-hmm. to everything mm-hmm. and it's just sort of reinforces yeah. I found nature maybe not as much you know because I you know plants are quite but it's quite new but I haven't been maybe delving as much into that as other things but I've always felt this so I'm I'm just learning I'm being supported here like it's and it's drawing mm. me back in as opposed to into that sovereignty and and like you said isn't that just beautiful like what you described there being in your head and it's bringing you back into your heart into balance I mean yeah and that was the missing link I was going on all mm. these retreats you become too open too compassionate too unbounded too like oh putting up with other people's behavior whether it's at work or with friends and it's like you go like you just keep learning to be like more open more compassionate have understanding of others all the time and the plants were like straight away boom just get yourself back into having some boundaries giving you strength you know to like mm. hmm, that's yeah. not <laughs> yeah yeah and going that way is too unbalanced yeah well you know, that's there what, was yeah. mm. It's not healthy to go out into the world all open. And I'm very feeling based any, mm, anyway. Mm. You know, you navigate the way through like how things hit you, like feeling wise. And all these like retreats weren't helping in that sense. Loved the meditation side of things. I think that's a good practice to have or whatever floats your board to get you into like a nice like connection with yourself. But I needed the the kind of the teachings from the plants I needed were very different and they'll be different for everybody because we all have different stories and different experiences Mm. but they do help you navigate the world yeah in a slight just yeah just a little bit better yeah thank you thank you so much Larry there's so many directions I said I wanted to go with you in this and we could do it again like but I hope for again anyone listening to you I'm sure just I just feel excited really from listening to you and just mm-hmm. this the knowledge and the just the wisdom that comes and, and just reminding us that we have everything. I know that we have everything we need, but we really do in nature, like, but it's it's sort of slowing down. Lockdown maybe was the start of it for a lot of people. Slow mm-hmm. us down enough. Like what you said, the plants you need to like a friend that you give them time, you're not just rushing past. And that sort of mm-hmm. coming back into balance, whatever that means to you, that really comes across from listening to you now. It's just in nature, everything always wants to come back into equilibrium, into harmony, into homeostasis. Yes. That, that's yeah. our natural state. Mm-hmm. And I would have found that with my nervous system. It's a very good gauge for me. I feel it a lot. My nervous system, the minute it starts to feel um yeah that might be a good one to finish on to ask you what's what's particularly good for the nervous system and bringing it back so I think a lot of people are feeling the nervous system a little yes like fresh. shaky and I too mm. when I go out into the world I remember 10 years ago I don't know if you know the work of Caroline Miss she used to talk about yes. there's all this psychic debris out now when you go out into the world there's great all these people are doing all the healing work but all that you know nothing dies it's everything's transformed into something else and 10 years ago she was talking about psychic debris and I feel and again now after the last few years you feel it again like the heavy dense psychic debris so we go out into the world and our nervous systems are like Mm. and that's the contrast again we always feel better in nature in comparison to an airport but we can't avoid it all the time so again different plants for different folks it's like what might work for you you know traditionally somebody would say lemon balm or if you go to a herbalist they'll give you the um the nervine plants anything that comes under that category okay but just I was with a I met a woman last weekend from Belfast actually and she was asking me like what's good for menopause and I'm like, I'm not a herbalist, go with the herbalist. But I was like, I knew, like, I know it's like red clover. But something in me was like, all I could see were like wild roses, like in my like peripheral. And I was going, red clover is good for men- menopause. She was asking me about that. But all I could see was roses. And then after getting to know her, she'd experienced a grief and a loss. 
and roses can are like a container for grief loss they help you kind of move that you know or like contain it so that you can be with your grief and your loss mm-hmm. and still have like a gentle balm around you so for her it may not have been just menopausal symptoms it was grief so she would need like roses to work with not the red clover maybe be the red clover down the line okay yeah. and a lot of clinical herbalists will work like that they'll see you and they might the books and the training tells to give you something but you might need something else mm. that's depending on your situation yeah. but yeah you know for me I take so many different things I ex- you know I'll experiment with myself what works because sometimes for me lemon balm doesn't work sometimes for me chamomile works because you know they say chamomile for sleep mm. but for me it doesn't make me sleepy it just kind of calms me yeah. down yeah yeah so it is to trust that so that yeah just to trust explore experiment trust your intuition yeah. which is what we're yeah. always being guided back to you know, isn't it? It's that head to heart and tuning in and and listening. And the plants are strong, stronger than before. Like my the 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 herbalist told me, I feel because um a plant that's behind me. Oh, I don't know if you can't see it. It's mugwort drying. Um, and mugwort is pretty strong for me. It's good for digestion. You can eat with it, and it's for lucid dreaming and also. But it's too strong for me, so I tend to make the um smudges with it okay to cleanse oh, the energy you know yeah with mud birth okay and to cleanse the you know like they, mm. they do with age but it does seem to be like Carolyn miss was saying 10 years ago a lot of like energy yeah kind of cleansing that needs to happen and clearing that you know when you're home again from a situation like that clearing mm. the kind of whatever yeah. you've come home with it's quite nice to do that um yeah I just finished I just hope every, I'm sure listening to Larry and there's so 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 much um she has shared go take a look at her Instagram if that's the right place to say to send people if they do want to see and I'll share sense. just like a few things like a few of my experiences on there I'm not selling anything there's nothing yeah. to promote it's just like yeah but if you want to learn about some plants I share a little bit of my experiences there but yeah nothing to um <laughs> incredible no but thank you and just if we get cut off thank you so much larry and for your time oh, today. So nice to it was just so much fun <laughs> and i learned so much we'll do it see again soon. soon yeah see we'll soon. do it again yeah see you soon take care Lots of love. bye bye